Okay. Questions, 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 questions. Sorry, I'm getting distracted just by an image of myself dancing. Okay. V Logos asks, a lot of matches seem to go south for a team that gets the first two rounds. Any advice for keeping your team focused when winning? Because it seems like people can quickly get cocky and the other team goes for broke and rolls you. So the thing that happens there, like my theory on this is pretty simple. It's that the, like, you've been playing the same thing for probably two rounds. Like in this game, you saw that we we're playing Soldier McCree for two rounds straight. And the big thing we noticed there was that we had to swap off the Soldier. We had to go and get a Reinhardt and... Like, we started having to make changes. That's because the enemy team starts making changes on that third map. They bring out the Farah and start changing up how they're playing. Also, like, in this game, it's a little bit different because they're playing five versus six on one of the maps for a little while. So it makes it a little bit trickier. Um, but then they come back and start making adaptations. And that's honestly what's going to be happening here. Is that after you win the first few games, the enemy team is usually gone, oh, shit, something's going wrong. Let's change up how we're playing. And so they've made an adaptation. And you've got to be ready for that adaptation. You can't just keep doing the same thing and be ready for it. When that does happen, again, team morale is the important thing. Don't be afraid to say, well, we're too, you know, we're till nil up. We're okay. Let's just regroup, refocus, see what we're doing with that and go from there. You Ryan sent me a link. There we go. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful. This is a video, by the way, that Ryan made. This is the McCree being like the angriest man in the world. And join the voice channel. Genji, they fucking count on you so fucking hard, and you still please this fucking Genji. Man, they're so fucking bad. Good lord. He please you three times to switch, and you don't. To what? Reaper, he said you. You told me to swap you something to counter the Pharah. Fire. That's not Reaper. Mark Plus, me? you already have a soldier. Mark so me? That your you don't can't use mine? No brain? Man, no fucking know. brain? <laughs> oh, never gets old. Never gets old. Oh god, uh, that's actually gonna, that's a really good example of what we're talking about though. Morale. That guy's morale hit the freaking bricks um, because we had someone playing Genji. They had a Farah. Someone swapped a soldier to go and deal with the Farah, and then this guy flips out because soldier couldn't control the Farah, and the guy was still playing Genji. And honestly, I think the guy playing Genji, uh, Meta Brit, who actually might be in chat at the moment, um, we were in group chat with him. If he asked politely and said, "Hey Genji, do you mind swapping?" Uh, he probably would have done it. We probably would have said, yeah, he's probably right. We need something to slow down the, the Faro a little bit. You know, let's let's get him a career or something just to help reinforce that damage against the Faro who's just owning our face off. The fact that he went full tilt, he went from like zero to 100 in an instant was crazy. And it's just a really good example of like team morale breaking down. So the thing with like losing, you know, winning the first two, then losing is the enemy team's made an adaptation. Just be ready for it. Make sure that you are making your own adaptations, not crumpling as well not like playing the blame game but then trying to actively find solutions as to why uh things changed are we watching the ls game no we're going to be just carrying on with this one uh we're just going to be focusing on this one for now uh do you have two remaining upcoming coaching videos selected but and overall do you need more on the center i am always looking for more coaching videos especially with the new patch the new patch is out let's send in some videos on the new patch we'd love to see them um if you want to find the link it's down below below the stream there's a little box with all the info in but it's i'll say it at the end as well um you can also type exclamation mark coaching so do that if you haven't already and you'll have the info there send in some dps stuff as well if you haven't already i have not selected like they're not predetermined for the rest of the week um so send them in there's a chance that you might be tomorrow or Saturday if it's a video that I really like for example make sure that you notify as well uh, if you are a twitch subscriber put that in the title it's way more helpful I don't have to go digging I feel like I'm not good enough at DPS characters uh, and should not play them what should I do play them in quick play practice and then honestly just go and play them um, like you would be surprised honestly like I, I have the same problem I have this imaginary competence level that just doesn't exist in my mind of like oh it's McCree I should have like a 70% hit rate and should be just kneeling headshots with every no not true not true at all um i play like you guys have seen me play soldier several times at masters level like 3.7 3.8 3.9 rating and i can do it i can play him and it works and i don't consider myself like the greatest soldier player in the world i just know my positioning i know what i'm doing i know how to play and as such i can still get a lot of value out of him i know how to prioritize myself and how to do that stuff so it still kind of works as long as you're focusing on improving don't overthink it. If, you, if you're having a bad game, your team will honestly be relieved if you say, okay, guys, I'm not doing well enough on DPS. Can I swap and play something else? Can I swap healing with you and someone else take DPS? And people will go, okay, we'll do that. And people like generally respond pretty well to that. In my experience, a lot of people do respond pretty well to that. 
Uh, what is the best way to learn new heroes, especially DPS? Uh, on the DPS player of 6am, wonder why did my DPS hero pull? What's, who's worth learning? What's the best way to learn him? Uh, I like to start like, warming up in quick play. I also find brawls are a very good way of uh, learning heroes. So Capture the Flag, for example. Uh, after this game, I'm probably going to play a lot of McCree and Capture the Flag, and we're just going to talk more about McCree. Uh, I, I find it just, it's a very low-pressure way of learning uh, the game. It's a very low-pressure way of doing things and just sort of refocusing yourself in how to play. So it's a, a very good way of doing it. After that, then do start taking it into ranked. Um, don't be afraid. Don't overpress yourself. And like I said, if you're having a bad game, just let your team know and then swap off it. What do you think Macri will be useful in the coming patch? Well, Macri, I think, will be useful pretty much immediately in the coming patch. I think uh, Macri and Reaper definitely have like, freed up on DPS. This is because like the reason why McCree stops working so well is because Diva, for example, shuts him down in a really big way. Zarya can also kind of do that, but it's a little bit less effective. It's a lot more predictable with Zarya. There's a lot more openings with Zarya, uh, just because you're walking around like two-second barriers rather than a long defense matrix that can come up and down. So McCree gets a little bit better, a little bit stronger. I still think like if you're fighting over medium to long range, Soldier 76 is the better pick. But playing Soldier of McCree, for example, isn't a bad idea sometimes. Although I think Soldier Reaper is probably going to be more likely just because Reaper's got a better ultimate. And defensively, um, Beyblade is still very effective. Like having a defensive Reaper that you can just nano boost and ult with is so powerful. So I think Reaper is definitely also going to be coming in very soon. When is the suggested time to use Deadeye? Deadeye is one of the hardest ultimates in my mind to actually get real value out of. I view Deadeye as a tool, as a resource. Um, I am not the best at Deadeye, so go talk to Taimu, IDDQD, um, Too Easy when he streams as well. He can actually play some McCree. Um, go talk to those guys and ask them about Deadeye. Um, but in my mind, Deadeye has always been more of like a, a tool, a resource you use to get space and maybe get the occasional kill. If there's something like far and Mercy in the air, then it's a great way of just zoning them out and getting rid of them nice and fast. But otherwise, it's very difficult to get like get real value out of it because people just hide and run away. So you use it for like clearing out a payload and just pushing people back. Use it to get extra DPS and just break a barrier instantly as well as it's actually a very good use of it. If all six of the enemy team are behind it and you manage to land all shots in it, it breaks a barrier. It can open up a Reinhardt Earth Shatter, for example. Um, use it to sort of open doors like that. Don't think of it as like, oh, I've got to get a flank and then get a big six-man kill because that doesn't honestly happen that often. And when you try and go for it, you just end up walking out slowly saying, it's hard, and then your hat goes flying and you look like a complete twat when you're doing it because you're dead. Feels bad. Did I miss a sub? Please tell me I didn't miss a sub. Oh, I don't think I did. No, I didn't. Sorry, infrared confused me. Uh, when a Genji yells in front of you and dashes through you, is it possible to just roll away in another direction and walk away? I assume Genji has no speed boost from Lucio. Is Genji's dragon blade range too long? Um, it's risky to do. Honestly, you should be looking for the flashbang. Like. If Genji's like jumped up in front of you and gone, why would we maybe yeah and drawn his dragon blade, you know, that, that's my fluent Japanese, he's gonna probably just dash down at you. And after the dash is done, if he's dashing on onto a McCree, odds are he's gonna deflect instantly. You've got to catch him during the dash when he's just dashing down towards you, just throw the flashbang at your feet and you'll catch him. After that, feel free to roll away and then just backpedal and just shoot him in the face a couple of times. Um, because he won't have a way to catch up with you until he gets a kill. He will just be flailing. Just rolling away is a little bit risky because Genji does move faster than you and he does get a speed boost when he does get the Dragon Blade out as well. So he starts moving, I think it's like 6.5 or 7 units. McCree moves at 5.5 units, I think, is the way it works. 5.5 meters, I think, is actually how it's measured. Genji naturally moves, I think, 6 meters per second. And with Dragon Blade, I think he moves at 7 meters per second. So he's a little bit faster and a little bit more dangerous. Uh, question here, how important is it hitting headshots when playing McCree? Uh, it's pretty important. Not the most important thing in the world. I mean, if you... If you struggle landing headshots, just focus on nailing body shots, but they're always nice to land, they're a great way to finish people off. The thing with McCree, and why McCree was better than Soldier for so long, was that McCree deals big chunks of damage, right? Soldier just goes like, plink, 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 dead. And during all that time, you can just go and hide. Like, time to kill for Soldier is actually pretty long. And you can see your health bar very measurably really going 200, 180, 160, 140, so on, so on, so on, so on. So during all that time, you have enough time to go and hide. With McCree, it's like... You go down to 130 and then he lands a headshot and you're dead. And you just go, what? What? And there's no time to react anymore. You, you just get confused and you start looking around all over the place and then you just, you're just dead. So that instantaneous death is part of why McCree is so dangerous and so strong. And that's why McCree, when he doesn't have damage drop off, like we saw them try and introduce him one's patch and everyone just went, no! Um, and they actually rein that in a bit more. Um, 
yeah, like McCree gets very dangerous when he gets more range because he can just instantly remove you from the game. And that's the importance of headshots. Don't over prioritize it. Honestly, like I would think of it in terms of certain targets I want to be headshotting more. Like just landing body shots on a fire is fine, for example, just because it keeps the push back and makes sure that you can't do things. And at distances where you're engaging fire is probably not going to be landing headshots reliably. Roadhog, for example, very easy to headshot. He's got a big head. It's on the front of his model. You should be planking headshots into him. Winston, another example. And then just try and experiment around and try and get better and better. Try and aim for like the neck is always a good example i think zenyado is a really easy hero to shoot for example you just start aiming around here and you will get headshots quite often you'll find uh let's see when fighting against genji as farah the genji is reflecting do you hold fire shoot next to the genji for splash hold fire uh, genji could just move to intercept your rockets just hold fire not really a mccree question but easy enough to answer you don't can't use mine? Yeah. I normally don't make fun of people who don't speak English. Like, you know, people with stilted English or people who don't speak English fluently, they usually speak another language fluently. So whatever. But this guy was just weird. How do you want to put together a dive comp? Uh, Lucio, Winston, Genji, Tracer, Anna, Zarya. All right, that, that's probably the best way. Uh, let's see. Any notes on Roadhook 2.1 or uh, 2.0? Have you not tried it yourself for, for an opinion? I tried it a lot on the PTR. I've tried it a little bit on live. I, I like it. I think it's just it's more reliable in terms of what it does. It feels less bullshitty. It's more powerful in terms of killing power, but it's just less bullshit, so it feels fairer. I do think they still need to increase the cooldown on Hook, though. Uh, what is the best way to find six sacks or against a lot of comms? Uh, against a lot of comms, you'll, like, if you just join the game and just say, Hey, team. You'll be surprised how many people just start piping up a little bit. And communication breeds communication. Like, I've noticed games where everyone's just silent and no one talks. But games where someone just pipes up, you'll find that other people just start piping up naturally. Um, so you can almost, like, make it happen and force it happen just by being a little bit outrovert yourself. And I'm an introvert. I, I don't... I'm not outspoken. So it's... You know, I understand it's a little bit tricky to do, but it's worth doing. Uh, otherwise, find a community. So if you type exclamation mark Discord, come join the the many in the Discord as well. We have an LFG room, so you can find people to play with in there, for example. Uh, go join other communities over at Central, Unit Loss. Those guys, for example, big communities. Be part of that. Go join that. Say, hey, guys, anyone want to play in this region? Uh, let's just go and play a couple of games at this bracket, and you'll be surprised. It's a couple of people will generally go, yeah, sure, I'll come play. And yeah, just be polite, be friendly, mix with friends, play Overwatch, have a good time. Any advice for playing Diva? I do not understand what role she has in the team. Her kit seems to be rather conflicting. Rockets take high ground, but her range is bad. She can dive not as well with Winston. Well, she have play style be off his nerf? I have no idea. Um, with Diva. Like, Diva's very, very complicated right now. She's just different, and I need to play her more to get a good feel for it. I think Diva, honestly, my opinion is Diva was over nerfed. Um, I, people have known this about my opinion. So, Diva should just be not picked. Unless there's very specific reasons why you're picking her, such as if they have a Farah, she's probably still okay to pick, for example, uh, just because that's so powerful. Uh, there we go. All heroes move at 5.5 meters per second, except for Genji Tracer, move at 6. Dragon Blade with 8. There you go. Can you plug your 6 stack again? There's a link to your Discord in the channel. Uh, go go have a look at the Discord. If you want to go 6 stack with uh, Tom. Target priority with McCree. Very good question. Uh, Tracer, Genji, very high priority. They want to get into your backline. You don't want to let them. You are a big source of threat for them, so they have to play very careful when you're around, and you are very good at shutting them down. Don't be afraid. If you land the flashbang, to just right-click them, get rid of the threat instantly, and clean them out. Um, otherwise, you definitely want to be sort of making life hard for Roadhog and Reinhardt as well. Uh, shooting Reinhardt barriers, again, is just a good habit. So just make sure you're shooting Reinhardt barriers if you don't have anything else to shoot. And if Reinhardt starts coming close, you want to be in a position where you are pushing him back just by virtue of just throwing and putting the flashbang over. Um, so you want to be trying to do that as much as you can. Uh, 25 million units sold of Overwatch, the official Overwatch count. Holy shit, that's a lot of people. A lot of people play. Who to avoid is McCree? Um, just common sense stuff like just don't engage Solid 76, for example. When he outranges you, you'll never win that fight because he heals himself. He does more damage. So just avoid fighting like that. Uh, and just generally just avoid like being caught at long ranges is the thing. Waffles or pancakes? Um, pancakes, usually. And like any more questions? Although we're about running out of time anyway for questions, so this is pretty good. Um, yeah, like if you have any more questions, now's a really good time. I'm going to start booting up the game. And we should be going on with that very soon. If not, then make sure you do send in your footage. We'll be doing two more of these this week. So feel free to come and join us for those as well. 10 p.m. GMT is when it starts. And yeah, same time same time tomorrow for coaching the many. Here we go. Does Fan the Hammer deal the same, uh, have the same damage drop off as his primary fire? I think it does. Um, and it does half damage. So each shot does half damage as well. So you, you do a maximum of... 
And I think it's 35 per shot, so 35 times 6. That's oftentimes 7 times 3, which is... Don't do maths on stream. 210 damage, I think. And yeah, it does have pretty severe drop-off. It also has just radical spread, so don't use it at long range. Like, just don't use it at long range. Don't try spamming with it, because it's, it's pretty bad news. Do you like new D.Va gameplay? Uh, yeah, if you've got new gameplay, like, on D.Va, send it in. Just send it in. Like, when in doubt, just send it in. Make sure that you are doing that. Like, let me type in coaching as well. We've got a couple more questions in. So if you do want to send for D.Va into coaching the many, the instructions are right there, but just in case you can't read them for some reason, or you're on YouTube and it's too low res or whatever, uh, coaching the many, just send it into oamreviews at gmail.com, put in the title of your email, the hero name, the rank that you're at, and if you're a Twitch subscriber or not. Send that stuff in and we'll all be good and fine and dandy. Feels really good when that happens. Um, put in the description, like a little bit about the game. So for example, I think this guy had a little bit of a lengthy description on his game, but let me have a look at what he said. I think he just said he wasn't too confident on the McCree and wasn't too sure about a few things. I can't find it right now immediately. I should still have this email open, really. But you get the idea. You just put in a little bit of a description. It just gives me some, some idea of like what you are struggling with, what you're looking for in the game. If you think this is going badly, but hey, it actually looks really good. Like this guy shooting, for example, looks really freaking good. So he probably doesn't need to worry about you know drilling his aim too much. And I've just noticed that my head is actually blocking Twitch chat a bit. There we go. Uh, just a short McCree tip. If you right-click and walk sideways, we keep pointing at the target, you'll be more accurate up to 10 meters. Uh, yes, that's that's actually because the right-click, um, it will pick a direction. So the way that the right-click works is it goes up and it goes either left or right. So it will go do 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 or do 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 It will never actually go like do 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 It will go one direction or the other. So when you could start seeing it going a direction, if you start correcting that way, it's a little bit more accurate. Why do we have to put Twitch subscriber or not? Uh, just because Twitch subs get a little bit of extra priority in terms of the gains they're picking. So if I want to do a, you know, I want to do coaching the many on Tracer, for example, I have a Twitch sub game and a non-Twitch sub game. As long as the Twitch sub game is pretty good, I'll probably pick the Twitch sub game uh, just to give back a little bit, just to, you know, incentivize that a little bit. It might sound a little bit unfair, but they're giving money, they're supporting the stream. So it's just my little way of giving back and uh, just saying like, thanks for doing that. I'm telling you ranking up with a duo kill, my friend, even though it's lower rank. I don't feel like I'm getting that much better of a player, but still increasing rank. Do you believe it's possible to rank up but not improve? Um, yeah, I mean, if you... Like, there's two ways to go about that. One, you could just be improving in ways you don't realize. Uh, just by playing the game, you generally get a little bit better at it. But two, there's also the thing of... Like, you might be below a rank where you should be. So you could still just be trying to normalize. Um... But I'd say, like, you'll probably be improving in small ways that you don't quite understand. Like, your aim should be getting better pretty much every game. You'll probably, like, you might make a mistake in a game and not make a mistake in the next game and realize, oh, this is this situation again. I'm not going to, you know, if you're playing Reinhardt and you see the enemy Reinhardt's, like, doing something weird and then you lower your barrier for some reason and then he drops the Ash Shadow and then you get knocked down and, oh, no, Ash Shadow hit us and then we're all stunned up and, ah, it feels bad, man. Uh, and then you realize the next time you see a Reinhardt doing that weird stuff, you just keep your barrier up and it doesn't Earth Shadow and you're better somehow. And suddenly your rating shoots up 100 points because uh, you're not getting Earth Shadow. Now, otherwise, yeah, that's about it. What is the best sensitivity in DPI for McCree? Lower the better, lower as low as you're comfortable with. Uh, I actually run quite high sense. So we're going to see in the games coming up that uh, I'm not the greatest McCree in the world, but hey, I want to learn him and want to practice him. What a good hero to get out of bronze. Seven terrible luck with Zarya. Uh, Zarya is a very good hero to do it with. Roadhog is very, very good at climbing. Uh, Anna as well, if you want to play support on climb. you just got to be good at Anna. Uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today, I think, uh, in terms of coaching the menu. We're going to go play some games very soon. So if you are watching on the YouTube VOD, thanks for watching to the end. Thanks for sticking with us right to the ending scene as well. It's been great having you along. Some good questions asked, some good McCree stuff learned, a little bit of flashbang play and that sort of stuff. Going forward now, I'm going to go and load into Overwatch on the old main. And let's get going with that.